News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290, and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. A Lake County family is dealing with a gun tragedy. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It's Friday, October 24th, 2014. Right now, we have a very mild, again, a mild morning with all the cloud cover. It's uh, cloudy and 44 degrees in Missoula. Our newscast this morning, sponsored by Temprite Service for all of your plumbing and heating needs. The furnace is kicking on now. Call Team Blue at 728-1111. A three-year-old Lake County boy is dead, and an investigation is underway after an adult shot the boy in what appears to be a tragic accident. Lake County Sheriff's Office Public Information Officer Karen Sargent has more. We do have a tragedy that occurred last night at about 8.22 p.m. Uh, Lake County Sheriff's Office dispatch received a call that there was a three-year-old male child being uh, transported by personal vehicle to St. Luke's Medical Center with a gunshot wound. It was uh, inflicted by uh, uh, an adult. It was an accidental discharge. The bullet hit the boy in the torso. Although the child did survive the trip to the hospital, he died shortly thereafter. It's still unknown why the gun went off when it did. We believe that it was a smaller caliber handgun, but we have not ascertained exactly what type of firearm it was. We do know that it was not associated with any hunting uh, incident. A male adult has been detained. No charges have yet been filed. The child's body was sent to the state crime lab here in Missoula for an autopsy, and no names have been released. 27-year-old Kevin Lino finally made his appearance in Missoula Justice Court yesterday after a long trip from Louisiana to Montana. According to charging documents, Lino is accused of beating and then shooting Gilbert Berry on July 30th. Sheriff's Office spokeswoman Paige Pavillon outlines what Lino and his companion Kenneth Hickman did to the victim before Lino allegedly fired the fatal shot. They ended up beating Barry very, very badly. When he was moaning, they would kick him again, and they proceeded to torture him, put up cigarette butts in his nose and his anus, and just mutilated his body, then shot him in the head and disposed of his body in the river. Missoula County Attorney Sean Thomas asked for Lino's bail to be prohibitive for any chance of release. Mr. Marks is requesting the amount of the warrant continue. I believe it was $250,000. It's our understanding that he was fighting extradition from out of state as well, Judge. We would just ask for standard conditions, including no contact with any co-defendants, Judge. The maximum penalty for deliberate homicide is death, life imprisonment, or a term from 10 to 100 years in the Montana State Prison. Judge Blix set a preliminary hearing for November 7th, and his bail was set at $250,000. A Helena man who was charged with binding a woman with duct tape and stealing her prescription medication has been convicted of burglary, robbery, and criminal possession of dangerous drugs. District Court jurors returned the verdict against 22-year-old Andrew Segura on Wednesday. Charging documents say Segura broke into a house in June of 2012, bound a woman's wrists, and wrapped duct tape around her head and mouth and threatened to kill her if she didn't tell him where she kept her prescription drugs. Prosecutors say Segura took a strong prescription pain patch and a bottle of muscle relaxants. Sentencing is set for December 4th. A Cascade County jury has awarded $4.3 million in damages to a BNSF railway employee who was injured in a July 2011 train collision caused by a switching error. The Great Falls Tribune reports conductor Michael Schnitkin was injured when the train he was on was mistakenly routed to a siding southeast of Great Falls where it collided with a park maintenance train. Schnitkin, Schnitkin, rather, Schnitkin reported suffering severe back injuries and a head injury. BNSF acknowledged it was negligent in the collision, but company attorneys questioned the extent of Schnitkin's injuries and said some were not due to the train crash and that Schnitkin failed to take action to mitigate some of those injuries. Yesterday, Montana Secretary of State Linda McCullough and Political Practices Commissioner Jonathan Motel spoke out about a divisive political mailer. It purports to be a 2014 Montana General Information Voter's Guide and even bears the seal of the state of Montana. It goes on then to compare the ideologies of Montana Supreme Court candidates to President Obama and Mitt Romney. Motel says the mailer's already triggered more than 20 complaints. You get a pretty consistent drumbeat of complaints when people think something's unfair. But every now and then, something happens where these complaints just spike over one particular item. And that brochure has spiked complaints. We've now received more complaints over this 
particular mailing than we have over anything else that's occurred in the 2014 election cycle. The fine print on the mailer says it's part of a study by Dartmouth and Stanford researchers and provides a link to the database on ideology, money and politics, and elections, where a disclaimer is posted saying the mailer is nonpartisan. Modal says he finds the mailer concerning. In this brochure, see, it's only defensible under under a aggressive interpretation of First Amendment election speech because it certainly triggers the other concern, which is that it's unfair, misleading, deceptive, and inappropriate. A picture of the brochure can be seen on our website, newstalkkgvo.com. A 22-year-old woman was arrested early Wednesday evening after allegedly driving under the influence and crashing her vehicle at the intersection of Russell and Brooks. Police Department Public Information Officer Travis Welsh says the accident occurred about 6.50 p.m. And the officers are arrived on scene. They observed a vehicle high-centered on the median, and they also observed that a light post had been sheared and was down. Made contact with the female driver and began an investigation into the possibility that she was driving while intoxicated. Welsh says no other persons or vehicles were damaged. HGTV is bringing their latest TV series to Montana. The Department of Commerce's Montana Film Office announced yesterday that Living Big Sky will film 12 30-minute episodes throughout the state. Uh, Chief of Montana's Film Office, Denny Staggs, has more. It is a show that follows a couple of families every week on their moving to living in Montana. And so they're looking for three different homes in an area and comparing that and what's available in the area. We get to see the family's response and reaction to living in Montana or moving to Montana and the home that they're choosing and the area in which they're going to live in. And Stagg says Living Big Sky will showcase a new family each episode and reveal not just Montana's towns, but lifestyle, landscapes, and family experiences as well. Well, tomorrow, the Missoula Community Medical Center will present their annual senior health fair at the Missoula Family YMCA. Spokeswoman Robin O'Day says the free senior health fair will be from 8 until noon. This is essentially a free day that we offer to those folks who are 60 and older. We do have a blood panel, which I should mention is $10, and a PSA, which is $15. Still really low and affordable uh, panels for our community to come out and get tested to see how healthy they are. O'Day says the event is one that seniors mark on their calendars months in advance because of the low cost and easy access. People really mark this down on their calendar. They look forward to it. And it's just a day that outside of the panels, it's entirely free and it's for your benefit. And I would just encourage people to find a way to get there and to take advantage of it. The YMCA is located at 3000 South Russell. News talk time now is 610. News talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Well, in the Missoula area, don't expect a lot of rain, but we could see a sprinkle or two throughout the day. Highs once again remaining on the cool side at 55 degrees. I'm meteorologist Matt Gray for KECI 13, your first alert station.